Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Real Ethereal Show. And today, we are going to talk about Scorpio. Scorpio is the eighth sign in the zodiac. It is the, it is, um, rules the eighth house. It is the fixed water sign. The dates for Scorpio are October 23rd through November 21st. And the key words or key phrase for Scorpio is I desire. So Scorpio, you know, Scorpio gets a bad rap. People are scared of Scorpio, which in some, I guess there is good cause for that, <laughs> actually. You should be in some ways, but um, mostly I think Scorpios are awesome. Now, that's coming from me, and um, I'm a Capricorn. So Capricorns are notoriously very well suited to Scorpios. Let me tell you why, and that will help you understand some of the really basic fundamentals of what a Scorpio is. So Capricorns really don't care about looking in your medicine cabinet. And they really don't need to check up on you. Like when you tell them you're going somewhere, they don't need to check up on you. In fact, they don't really care where you went because they're busy working. And we'll get to a whole nother Capricorn show, but for Scorpios, that's really, really good because Scorpios are extremely secretive they are extremely independent. They have their stuff and their space, and they really are hyper vigilant about making sure that nobody's crossing boundaries with them. And honestly, it's, it's less about necessarily physical boundaries and more about emotional boundaries, okay? So, the th so let's talk a little bit about, because I think this helps, Let's talk about the animal symbol or the, the symbol for Scorpio. Everybody knows it's the scorpion, Scorpio and scorpion. But there actually are more than, there's more than one animal or symbol for Scorpio. And I think it's really important for people to understand this because to me, Scorpio, really there, there are three basic kinds of Scorpios. And... Because Scorpio rules the eighth house, which is the planet is Pluto that rules Scorpio, Scorpio rules the life, death, life cycles. So honestly, a Scorpio within one lifetime could really exemplify all the different symbols. Because they literally, like Pluto, because of Pluto energy, they can completely turn their lives around. Um, many Scorpios actually have had many near-death experiences. They're the people that a lot of Scorpios have actually died and then come back to life and live to tell about it because they literally, you know, they live right on that edge of birth and life and birth and life, excuse me, birth, death, birth, death. So that means that they can skate and have behaviors that are close to death, i.e. they're self-destructive, to the point where they actually die or they die and then come back to life. Um, they also can be very involved in rebirth. Um, a lot of Scorpios actually deal with birth. <laughs> they're obstetricians or doctors or they... they um, deal with life and death issues. They could be paramedics. Um, they're attracted to life and death scenarios because of that, very intense. It's just a very intense, intense um, sign. So the three symbols are the lizard, the scorpion, and the eagle or the phoenix. And this pretty much sums it up with Scorpio. Um, the lizards, let's start there. The lizard, you know, Scorpios that are really disintegrated or who have succumbed to the attraction that, by the way, 
most Scorpios feel towards the darkness, the secrecy, the underbelly. You know, those are the people that lie, cheat, steal, manipulate, um, operate in the shadows, act like one way on the surface, but they're actually something very different on the back end, right? Um, the lizard type Scorpios are swimming in the negativity. They're swimming in the, um, I don't know, distrust, the um, paranoia, paranoia, big one, big word for the uh, lower or disintegrated Scorpio, paranoid. And it's just, think about it, the frequency of it is low to the ground, right? It's in the darkness, it's in the crevices, it's, it blends in with the surroundings and you don't really see it's misrepresenting itself. It looks like a rock, but it's actually a lizard, right? Um, I love the other um, aspect to a lizard. You know, you can cut a tail off a lizard and the tail grows back. It's that regenerative energy that a Scorpio has. So it's, it's really a cold-blooded Scorpio. Um, the next level up would be a scorpion. And I think that really, that's sort of a medium level Scorpio. Um, you know, scorpions are, they protect themselves with the shell. So they're tender on the inside, but they have a protective shell on the outside, much like their, their uh, water compadre cancer, the crab. The only difference between a crab and, a, well, one of the big differences between a Scorpio and a Cancer and one of the big differences between a Scorpion and a crab is that a crab will pinch you with its pinchers, but a Scorpio actually leaves you with a poison <laughs> that gets in your bloodstream that actually takes you down. It's really toxic. When you cross or piss off a Scorpio, you know, revenge, is their middle name, okay? They never forget when someone has harmed them or harmed someone they love. And they, you know, I love that saying, revenge is a dish best served cold. Okay, I guarantee you a Scorpio wrote that line because it's a, it's a Scorpio mantra. I tell you what, Scorpios, you never know how they got you back. You can sometimes know. They don't care if you know. They're, they'll be the people that behind the scenes ruin your identity. You don't know who did it. They'll be the people that leak the photograph and you don't know how they got it and you never know who did it. Um, they seek to destroy people that have harmed them or people they love any means possible, preferably where nobody even knows and preferably five years later, 10 years later, Right? These people just sit there and brood and stew and plot when they're disintegrated and when they've been hurt. Um, they lick their wounds, they go off into the corner or the dark and they, they, they think about revenge, they fantasize. You know, it's all this emotion. They're, they're very, very passionate people. And you don't see it on the surface. You know, they have a a, 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 they're born with an ability for their surface not to um, show what's really going on on the inside. And what's really going on on the inside with the Scorpio is a very big emotional life. They're extremely emotional. They're a water sign. And so they're extremely emotional. They're extremely passionate. And, you know, they are the fixed water sign. So what does that mean? That means, you know, that's another part of the control aspect that a fixed sign has, I would venture to say, you know, Scorpio is the most controlling and manipulative to have things go exactly the way they want them to go. So the way they control is through emotional means, emotional ma manipulation, not so much by fear, but by manipulation. So, and they dig in, they're very, very um, stubborn about it being their way. You know, a lot of Scorpios are really good at running businesses or they start their own business. 
But one of the main reasons they do it, unlike a Sagittarius, you know, Sagittarius might start their own business because they're dreaming big and they're gambling big and they, you know, they want to hit the big time. Scorpios, I guarantee you one of the main reasons why any Scorpio starts their own business is for control. They're like, I want to control my own destiny. I want to be my own boss. I cannot be under the thumb of anybody else. They want to control everything. So that's why a Scorpio makes a good business person. The other thing, you know, the symbol for Scorpio is an M with a tail on it. And I, you know, everybody talks about how Taurus and Capricorn are the two money signs. And they are. They are about physical money as well as assets and tangible, you know, accruing tangible things. But I will tell you, um, Scorpio to me is the M for money. The symbol M, I always say it's M for money. And people don't associate Scorpio with money very much. They are extremely astute with money. A lot of them are savers. Um, a lot of them know how to work with money. You know, they work with money from an energetic standpoint. They know how to, how to work with money. The other thing too, you know, Scorpio is ruled by the eighth house and the eighth house is other people's money. So it's the tax, you know, taxes or accountants, things, like, things of that nature. You know, Scorpio knows how to manipulate money. It knows the energy of money. It, it understands it intrinsically, how to use money. So they're typically, you know, and, you, and again, they're so secretive. Scorpio is the one who has all the bank accounts. So does Capricorn, by the way. They have secret bank accounts. But Scorpio has a bunch of secret bank accounts offshore because they're paranoid that their loved ones or even just people they know or their business partner is going to take the money from them. You know, they're always paranoid about somebody's plotting against them because they're plotting against everybody else. Um, so they always have secret bank accounts. Speaking of secrets, they keep secrets. You know, I... I'm a Capricorn. I like Scorpios. I've dated a lot of Scorpios. I had a Scorpio boyfriend once who just, it cracked me up. I've smiled because this is so Scorpio. But, you know, Scorpios always have, I don't care who they are, they always have little boxes or locks and keys, safes, codes to get in things. Um, my boyfriend um, in his room, he had all these little compartments. And he had this desk and he had all these little, he was like an old timey desk and it had all these little drawers and every single drawer was locked. Now, being a Capricorn, that did not drive me crazy. Other people, that would drive them crazy. What does he have locked in all those drawers? And why, if I'm practically living here, um, does he not want me, what is he hiding from me, right? And I just never cared and didn't worry about it. It drives a lot of people crazy and a lot of Scorpios break up with whoever they're with because the other person can't deal with them having um, information or parts of their life that are compartmentalized, secret, locked away. You know, they just are never going to give you everything, okay? And that's how they just need to be to feel secure and safe. You shouldn't take it personally with a Scorpio. You just shouldn't unless they are lying to you. And, the dark ones actually will be lying to you. So anyway, one day I'm there. He's gone. I've been with him for a while. I know he's got all these little compartments locked up with all these things in it that Lord knows what's in there. And I'm sitting at this desk, and he has left one of these drawers unlocked. And it's open. Well, I don't go in people, I told you I'm a Capricorn, I don't go in people's medicine cabinets, I don't go in people's private stuff, but I'm human, and the drawer was open, <laughs> and I'm sitting at the desk, I just had to look, I had to look. So I opened up the drawer, which is totally against my code, but I opened up the drawer, and there was one thing in that big drawer that he, he locks religiously. I mean, we would go to bed and he would be locking the drawers, right? one photograph photograph 20 years old his father had died when he was young and it was a photograph an old photograph of he and his father around the time when his father died that's the only thing in the drawer and he kept it locked up with a key perfect example of a scorpio 
that was a memory and something very special to him that is his, that he wants to keep locked away. It's, he's protecting it, right? So, you know, people can get all bent out of shape. What's he hiding? When it could be something as innocuous as a beautiful photograph. It's, it's actually kind of beautiful why he was keeping that locked away. So keep that in mind when you're dealing with the Scorpio. So we talked about lizard, Scorpio lizard symbol or that energy level. We talked about Scorpio, that energy level. So the last piece, um, the last symbol for Scorpio that is little known is the eagle or the phoenix. And I, I like to kind of lean more into the phoenix aspect to this. You know, the phoenix is one of the most beautiful things about Scorpio. It's the phoenix rises from the ashes. So it really, and, and goes towards the light. So it picks up something that's been utterly destroyed, pulls it together, infuses magic, and it, the phoenix rises. Okay, that is the power of Scorpio. They, and literally, like I said before, they literally can come back to life. But these are the folks, you know, by the way, prone to addiction. It's essentially rules addiction. And so that self-destructive tendencies, that and Pisces. Um, but these are the folks that literally, maybe they're addicts and they just, they have the worst, they, they, they're, they're at the lowest of the low. There's no way they could ever come back. And they, the Phoenix rises from the ashes. If I would put my money on any Scorpio, if they have decided that they're going to turn it around, it does not matter how bleak it is. I would put my money on them that they can rise from those ashes. So there is, and, and you know, it's a, it's a rising from the ashes. You know, the phoenix was a magical creature, okay? It's not pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. It's really that kind of magic life force. That's what they rule. It's bigger than all of us. That life energy, that life force, it's bigger than all of us. And it's that magical kind of current that Scorpios understand um, that's very deep and intense and it's, it's Pluto energy, you guys. You know, Pluto is the, the strongest planet um, influence energetically, and it rules all of this. So, you know, Pluto is the great manipulator. Pluto is the great controller. You know, Pluto is P for power. You know, the symbol's P. So Scorpio is a lot about power. It's about power struggles. It's about um, having power over people. But in its highest form, in its most integrated form, Scorpios empower. They empower others. And you know, one thing about Scorpios that's really interesting, because I know I'm going really dark in a lot of the things I've said, because they can be really dark. But Scorpios are, especially when it comes to the weaker people or, or animals that are weaker beings, children, elderly people, animals. Scorpios have a soft spot for the weaker beings in this world and they will fight for them. They have a passion to help those that are weaker. So they want to empower either children, animals, elderly, or people that are disabled, people that aren't able to help themselves. Nine times out of ten, you're going to find Scorpios hovering around those people. And it's also kind of a dark, intense time when that sort of thing happens. And the Scorpios are attracted to dark, intense times to kind of pull weaker, hopeless situations, to make hopeless situations better. Scorpios have an intrinsic knowledge that this isn't hopeless. You know, when everybody else leaves and says it's hopeless, Scorpios embody that that magical energy of it's not hopeless, I believe. And they kind of are harbingers of that energy. They can bring that kind of energy to a person's life. They can, you know, they can help somebody rise from the ashes like a phoenix. I want to talk about some of the professions that you're going to find our Scorpio friends in. Psychologists, detectives, see that paranoia and that manipulative tendency and that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Skepticism. <laughs> detectives. They make amazing detectives. 
interrogators, they can tell when someone's lying. They can tell, they can see right through people. They're very intuitive. So they make amazing interrogators. Spies, they make amazing spies because they can lie. They're born with the talent of lying. They really are, you guys. So are Geminis. Geminis and Scorpios, best liars. So spies, ministers and religious leaders, and or, that's the happy side, light side, cult leaders on the dark side. Scorpios are manipulative. They are able to coerce whole groups of people to go along with them. And they love having power over others. Remember, Pluto, P for power. So you'll find a lot of Scorpio. If a cult leader isn't a Scorpio, they have a lot of Scorpio in their charts. I guarantee you. Artists, writers, musicians. You know, all the water signs have a propensity towards the arts, music, kind of the artistic languages. And with Scorpio, it's more, you know, with Pisces, it's more entertainment and the um, illusion that the arts bring us. With Scorpio, it's more of the fact that the arts can express deep emotions that words can't express or states of existence that words can't express. Art is the only way that can express that. So Scorpio artists or writers or songwriters, you know, I guarantee you they're going to be talking about the human experience from a really deep and intense level. Prosecutors. Prosecutors and children and animal advocates. So, you know, your Scorpio neighbor who runs the you know, child abuse uh, center or who is a prosecutor for child sex crimes. <laughs> There's your Scorpio, right? Um, speaking of sex, Scorpio rules sexuality, okay? Um, a lot of people get confused, though, and they think that it's more about physical sexuality. It really isn't. Um, I would venture to say Taurus, and Libra are even probably more physically sexual in nature than a Scorpio. But Scorpio rules the control that sex can bring, the language that sex can be, the intensity, the emotional intensity, the emotional gateway, spiritual gateway that sex is. That's what Scorpio is all about. It also, in a dark side, rules all the dark parts of, of human sexuality, S and M, um, incest, molestation. I mean, I hate to go so dark, but there's a place for it with disintegrated Scorpios. That's the energy. Um, on the high side of that, it's, it's very deep, intense, beautiful, spiritual sex, you know, where it's two people, um, meeting their souls, meeting it's soulful, very deep and soulful physical interactions. Scorpio rules that. So let's talk about a Scorpio moon. So you would think that Scorpio being a water sign that the moon would be a really great placement for it, but it's actually not. The moon's not very happy in Scorpio. So Scorpio moons, moon people, they can be kind of conflicted. They have a lot of emotion but they're not able to express it very easily. Um, it's almost like they come into this world wounded emotionally. Typically, Scorpio moon people have had an abusive and or manipulative mother. And they might have mom issues. They might have intimacy issues. It's just hard for them to have a clean emotional exchange. Also, bringing Scorpio to your emotional life you know, you're bringing paranoia, you're bringing skepticism and control to emotions, to your emotional life when you're talking about a moon. So that is not, you know, emotions are not logical and you certainly don't need to control them. You can't control them. And, um, you know, it's the way a Scorpio, the filter that a Scorpio puts on their emotional life with Scorpio moon can be kind of stunting or unhealthy when it comes to emotions. So that's kind of a tough, 
a tough placement. On the good side with the Scorpio moon, this is a person who is very intuitive and who would be really able to accept on a very deep level a partner's past that could be dark. You know, a Scorpio moon person is going to be a safe place at times or an accepting place for someone who, you know, maybe they've made bad choices in the past or they have a lot of shame. You know, a Scorpio moon person could really help somebody like that heal. So they could be a really good partner if you can break through the unhealthy parts of their moon or if they've had a lot of therapy, it could be a very intense and lovely placement for a moon, but I promise you there's going to be work before they can actually actualize that. Scorpio Ascendant. So we talk about that being your protection as well as your first impression. So a Scorpio Ascendant, that is a person who is born with the ability to camouflage themselves. They're born with the ability to not show people their hand emotionally. These are the people that can be the master manipulators. They can be the liars. Again, they can make the best spies. You know, you could be any sign behind a Scorpio Ascendant and no one can tell. In fact, whatever you choose to be on the outside, that's what people will see. You know, what's the difference between a Scorpio Ascendant? Because it sounds a lot like I'm talking about Gemini. What's the difference between Gemini and Scorpio? Because Geminis can be shapeshifters with their ascendant. The difference is control. Geminis have less control over whatever they are that day. It's almost moody. You know, they kind of wake up and they are what they are. Scorpios have control over their emotions. They have a control. They don't have control over their emotions. They have control over how they reveal their emotions or not. So they have master control. So they can... They have control over what face they show, no matter what's going on on the back end. So it's a very powerful tool, especially if it's if it's aspected well. To have a Scorpio Ascendant, it's a really wonderful tool, and it's on the light side. It's a, It could be used in a very dark way on the low side. Before I close, I want to talk about a few famous Scorpios, and you can see some of these traits exhibited in, in their lives. First of all, let's talk about artists. You know, Georgia O'Keeffe, Pablo Picasso. You know, Pablo Picasso was very famously kind of controlling with his relationships, um, mentally abusive. Um, he also really, in his art, did not shy away from deep human emotional themes. And talk about prolific and intense. He was so intense. And by the way, I haven't mentioned this yet. Scorpio's eyes. They, they call it the Scorpio glare. Scorpio, you can tell Scorpio, one of the biggest telltale signs is their eyes. You could be across the room and feel somebody staring at you. And it could be 200 people in the room and you look across and you see somebody staring. If they're staring at you, you feel it. Scorpio. The other artist, Scorpio, Georgia O'Keeffe. You know, she was very intense as well and very prolific, but both these folks, Pablo Picasso and George O'Keefe, portrayed Scorpio's ability to isolate. You know, they don't mind being a loner. They like to kind of have their space and be alone and, and be in control of their environment. Sylvia Plath, what an amazing artist and what an amazing way for a Scorpio to take the darkest corners of human experience and turn it into art and then put it back in the world so that others do not feel alone. Isn't that a beautiful Scorpio journey? And isn't that a way to take burned ashes and make them rise like a phoenix to give other people's hope? And Sylvia Plath's work about depression and you know the dark side of human experience is just a beautiful expression of a constructive way to use Scorpio energy. Billy Graham. Those of you who remember him, you know, he was an amazing minister. Preachers, you know, he represents that kind of way, you know, Scorpios can lull the masses <laughs> into, 
into their doctrine, you know, very passionate about his doctrine. He was very passionate about his message. You know, Scorpios rule religion. They rule the ideas of the themes of religion. So in closing, you know, I always like to thank the signs. So let's thank Scorpio for what Scorpio brings us or exhibits for us that we all could use more of. Um, the ability to see beneath what's on the surface of somebody and appreciate why they're doing things. Appreciate, you know, their soul's journey. Appreciate the wounds that we carry in this life and the gifts of healing that are, are brought by those wounds. Scorpios teach us that it's never too late. Scorpios teach us and bring the life, death, life energy into this world. They remind us that we can be reborn. They remind us that death and life are just a part of this human experience. Also, you know, I want to thank Scorpios for their, just their intensity. You know, Scorpios show us to live deeply with meaning and purpose. Right? Enough said. It's hard to say more than that. There's just about nothing more important. And Scorpios know that, and Scorpios teach that. They know what's important. They know what goes deep, what the foundation of all this is. A Scorpio knows that intrinsically. So we thank them for the reminder of that. All right, you guys, that's it for another episode of The Real Ethereal for Scorpio. And, you know, I am doing all of the signs. So if this is your first show that you've seen of me doing a sign, if you go to my library, I'm going to have all 12 signs so you can learn about everybody else as well. Thank you, everybody, for coming, and I appreciate you watching, and happy Halloween. Perfect holiday for Scorpio, Halloween. Bye, guys. Bye.